So can we pray? Yes. Now, Father, we thank you for bringing us together tonight to study your word. We thank you, O oh Lord, for great mercies. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the Bible study class. We thank you, Father Almighty, for giving us the grace to be able to come together this evening, O oh Lord, to study your word. As we come together, we beseech you, O oh Lord, Father Almighty, to send down your Holy Spirit to, to dwell with us tonight in everything that we are going to do. Father, I beseech you, O oh Lord, to anoint this message that you will be receiving tonight. I beseech you, O oh Lord, Father Almighty, to speak through me, O oh Lord, and not my tongue. Father, we thank you, O oh Lord, we beseech you, O oh Lord, to consecrate our hearts and that every word that we are going to learn tonight, O oh Lord, we find further ground in our heart. We thank you, O Lord, for this day. We thank you, O Lord, for the saints of Nazareth and Fellowship Church. We beseech thee, Father Almighty, to touch their hearts wherever they may be, O Lord. Arouse them, Father Almighty, to be able to come together to study your word, to realize, Father, that faith comes through hearing. And the hearing comes through the teaching of the word of God. And we cannot learn your word without coming together to study it. We thank you, Lord, Father Almighty, for all those people that have made the effort to come. We beseech the Father Almighty to help them, give them discerning heart, give them understanding heart, O oh Lord. Do not let us be here as alone, but do us of thy word. Be with us, O oh Lord, as we shall be starting this Bible study class. We thank you, O oh Lord, for our members who are at home. We beseech the Father Almighty to help us, O oh Lord, to build our faith with you, to build our relationship with you, that we might be able for the Almighty to make it to heaven. We thank you for our family. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord. At the end of this uh, study, let us have every cause to glorify your holy name. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Father, we pray. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Um, good evening, church. Um, Pastor, Pastor Pa. He's supposed to be teaching us tonight, but um, he, he said he'll be running late. He will not be able to make it. So I will be taking it up. I want to thank uh, Pastor Mana for starting us off on the uh, First Peter, um, the, the, the Apostle of Peter to all the scattered uh, persecuted Christians. All, all over the Asia Minor and how he was able to encourage them. So tonight we're going to continue from chap from verse 10 of that uh, um, chapter chapter 1. So I'm going to read <coughs> the, the uh, epistle of Peter in the, in the new uh, the New Living Version, from verse, from verse 10. He said, this salvation was something even the prophets wanted to know more about when they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. They wondered what time or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory afterward. They were told that their messages were not for themselves but for you. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preached in the, <coughs> in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is also wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. So what we are saying is that, he said, then in verse 13 says, so, he said, prepare your minds for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. 
You didn't know any better then. But now, you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scripture says, you must be holy because I am holy. Verse 17. And remember that the Heavenly Father, to whom you pray, has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reference of fear of him during your time here as temporary residents. So what Apostle Peter is saying here is that the prophets of the old, they, they knew about the grace of the salvation. They knew that the Messiah was going to come. But Jesus Christ was not mentioned in the Old Testament. So the prophets of the Old that we are talking about are people like uh, Isaiah, people like Jeremiah, people like um, Elijah, Elisha. They, did, I mean, they, they, they knew that that um, they, they even they did not even understand the concept of the Trinity, that is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But they were aware of one Jehovah, which is God. But it was we, we, we it was not until in the New Testament that we read in in First John, First uh, uh, John chapter one, that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. God was the Word. And what what it was referring to was, was that Jesus Christ was the Word at from the beginning. So, but in the Old Testament. Apostle Peter was saying that the old prophets, they, they knew they knew that they, they had a vision. They had a vision that, that salvation was going to come and, and, and that we are going to inherit something greater than, than physical things like gold and silver. But who was going to bring it? When was it going to come? They didn't know. So, so the apostle haven't described the persons to whom he wrote, which, is, which are the Jews that were scattered all over the, the Asia Minor. He declared to them the excellent advantage that they were under. And he went on to show them what, what warrant he had for what he has revealed to them. Because they were Jews and had a profound veneration for the Old Testament. He, he knew definitely that the, the people he was writing to are Jews like himself. And the Jews are the ones that uh, were uh, very, very uh, uh, adherent to the Old Testament because the, the New Testament came after Jesus Christ. And and, and even the, the, the New Testament did not even come to life until maybe about 40 or 50 years after the death of Jesus Christ. So, so which means that the Torah, which is the Old Testament, where, where, where are the books that were introduced to them after their liber the liberation from, from bondage in Egypt by Moses. Because it was Moses that wrote Exodus and the, 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 the Deuteronomy and all these uh, Old Testaments, apart from the, the, the major prophets and the minor prophets. So, so all the Pharisees described the Sanhedrin, they were very vast, educated in the Old Testament. So there was nothing mentioned about Jesus Christ or the Messiah, but they knew that the Messiah was going to come. But the form in which the Messiah was going to come, they didn't know. The Pharisees didn't know, but only the prophets knew. So this was so that that was the Apostle Paul. I mean, Apostle Peter is trying to tell them that it produced authority of the prophets to convince them that the doctrine of salvation by faith in Jesus Christ was no new doctrine. In other words, what Apostle Peter was writing about is that this salvation that he was telling them about was not something that, that just came out of blue moon. It was not just something that came because of the arrival of Jesus Christ. He said, no, that salvation has already been prophesied even before Jesus Christ came. So, so Apostle, Apostle Peter was now telling them that the reason why they should uh, endure, the reason why they, they should rejoice in the salvation that, that uh, has come through Jesus Christ, it is not something that uh, they didn't know about 
or is something that has not been prophesied before. So, so Apostle Paul, I mean Apostle Peter now was not referring to the to the old prophets that they already knew that the salvation was going to come. Because he knew that this the people that he was talking about are also familiar with the old testament and, and they respected all their old prophets. So they believe in their old prophets. So because because Peter knew that these Jews believed so much in their old prophets. So he was not telling them that that salvation is not something new. It's something that the old prophets had already already been prophesizing, already been talking about. Except that they did not know when that salvation was going to come. And the form it was going to come and through whom it was going to come. But that salvation has now come through Jesus Christ. And that even Jesus Christ again was not something that, that they should doubt about because the, the existence of Jesus Christ has already been prophesied even in Isaiah. In Isaiah 53, that 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 the, the messiahship of uh, or the, 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 the divinity of Christ has already been prophesied in, in, in by, by prophet Isaiah uh, about 400 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. So they, so they should believe it, they should embrace that salvation. That they should believe in it, they should be rejoiced that, that that salvation has finally come. You see, so, 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 that, so that what he was now saying is that who made this diligent search? That is the prophet, that the, the search, the, 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 he, he laid emphasis that even the prophet, they made diligent search. In other words, what they are saying is that they did not only uh, uh, just talk about it, they search for it, like 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 I have to say, you, when you are looking for oil or or you have to dig the ground, you have to dig the coal, you have to dig 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 to be before you can reach the black gold, which is the black oil. So so it's, so it's the same thing. Like search, you say they di they diligently search for this salvation for the for the, when it was going to come. You say the who were persons in, they were inspired by God either to do it. Or to say things extraordinarily, because nobody understand them. They too, they too, they too, they knew, but but there was no guarantee for them. So 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 that's not that it was they, they are foreselling things to come and revealing the will of God by the direction of the Holy Spirit. So that what Isaiah fifty three was talking about was was through the direction of the Holy Spirit, not not through his own knowledge. But the direction of the Holy Spirit that 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 um, this prophecy was coming about through uh, through Isaiah 53, and then the second one said the object of their search, which was salvation, and the grace of God which should come unto you, the general salvation of men of all nations by Jesus Christ, and more especially the salvation afforded to the Jews, the grace that should come to them from Him who was not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, so that so it is a salvation that that uh, already been prophesied to the Jews that that the Messiah was going to come, and from the house of Israel. Because if you remember, even King King, King David too in the book of Psalm, he, he said that uh, 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 that he, he was praising God that, that God has blessed his his his, his um, family that somebody is going to sit on his throne. And the scepter of authority will be in his hand, and, and his, his, his uh, uh, throne is going to last forever through the seed of David. Through the seed of David. So, so that's what he was talking about about Jesus Christ, because not Solomon, but about Jesus Christ. And and and, and so 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 the Jews were, were also expecting the Messiah to come, but but they got the the, the concept wrong. Because during that time, they were being persecuted by the Roman Empire, by the Roman authority. The yoke of the Roman uh, 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 tax and all this were too heavy for them. And they were looking for, for a conqueror, they were looking for a champion that would fight the Romans, drive them away. So, so they were thinking that the Messiah that, that was going to come was going to be like Moses too. Because if you remember, they were, they were in slavery in Egypt. 
and King Pharaoh did not allow or did not set him free without 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 fight. And if you still remember all, all the all the all the, the miracles that were wrought through the hand, I mean through, through the hand of Moses by God. He turned the water, the water to, to, to blood. He, he, he brought the pestilence to them. He brought frog to, to them. He brought frost. He brought boils. He brought everything to them. He put them in darkness for three um, about three days. And still, until, until finally, 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 that King Pharaoh now took all his army and drowned them. In the Red Sea before before his eyes opened. So so that so that so that he took the powerful hand of God to bring out the children of Israel to free them to liberate them from 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 the from the uh, slavery in Egypt. So so they were thinking that that Messiah that is going to come now is going to be like like Moses with a strong hand that is going to bring army to fight the Romans and drive them away. So that was their own concept. So when Jesus Christ came now, they couldn't, they, they, they didn't recognize him because if you remember, Jesus Christ was not born in Jerusalem. He was not born in, in, in a palace. He was born in Bethlehem, in Bethlehem, Judea. And and and, it, and then the, in a humble way, we are in, in, in a manger. And that manger is like a, like a pen for, 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 for sheep. So because when 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 uh, uh, um, because they came all the way from Nazareth, they came all the way from Nazareth, and then there was a decree by Augustus Caesar that that uh, everybody that, that there's going to be a national census, and every every Jewish family should go back to their state of origin to their family. That if you remember, there are all twelve tribes of Israel. So 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 the, the, uh, Jesus' father. Uh, Atlee Father Joseph is from the tribe of um, uh, 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 um, uh, David, and, and and so so the, their hometown was in, in a, a Bethlehem. So so he had to go. To, he had to take Mary to Bethlehem, and Mary was heavily pregnant then. But when they got to Bethlehem, they couldn't find a place to stay because all the all the hotels were fully booked up by 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 by, by other other Jews that came. For, for sensor registration. And the only place they could find to, to rest was inside a manger provided by the shepherd for them. So so so, so how can how can then the Messiah, how can the Messiah, how can the liberator of the Jews come from from from, from uh, Nazareth or from from from, um, from a manger? It's not possible. So they couldn't believe it. But but unfortunately for them, spiritual was fulfilled. That the Messiah was going to to be born in a manger. That prophecy was fulfilled. But to buttress what I'm saying, if you remember, there were three wise men came from Mesopotamia. The three wise men they came from Mesopotamia because they saw his star. And, and, and in those days, we, we, these wise men they they they, they, they believe in astrology. They believe in all this. So, so when they saw the star, it was the star of a king. So, so they started looking for that king that was born. Uh, and, and when they were enter uh, uh, Judea, the first place they would have to go was the king's palace because a king has been born. So if a king has been born, so they could not. They, they couldn't go to a market or any hospital. They have to go to the palace because that is what they should expect that uh, their that king must be in the palace. So they went to go and meet uh, Herod. That that uh, that uh, we have we followed the star of a king born, and we have come to inquire where he is, so that we can go and pay homage to him. And King Herod was shocked, was shocked because King Herod was a very very erratic man. So so another king born. So so another king is going to, to, to come and take over for me. But 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 he, he he had his own intention. He had his own feeling. So he called the elders. He called the elders. The, 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 that, that that is the, the 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 religious leaders who knew the Old Testament very very well. 
and then inquire from them. What did the scripture say about a new king that is going to be born? And then, then they quoted Joel for him that, O oh Israel, uh, 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 Bethlehem, thou art the smallest of the of the cities, that out of thee will be a, 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 a shepherd of Israel. So, so that so that so that his birth was already prophesied by 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 prophet Joel, and they, they quoted it for 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 King Herod. But the question we're going to ask ourselves is, even though the religious leaders, they knew very well that the Messiah has already been born, or that the Messiah is going to be born from the smallest, because Bethlehem was, 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 not, a big, uh, was not a big city, was not a big uh, a, a tribe, or like, like the, the tribe of Levi, or Benjamin, or um, Reuben, but, but a very, very small tribe, a tribe of Judah, a very small tribe. So they say, out of, out of that small, the smallest Bethlehem will come the Messiah. So they knew, but the mistake they made was that they didn't, they didn't associate Jesus Christ with Bethlehem. Because after, after they left Bethlehem, after his birth, if you remember again, um, King, King Herod told the, the wise men that go and find out where the king was born and come and tell me so that I can go and meet him too and pay homage to him. It was then that the angel warned the wise men not to go back to Herod because he planned to kill the boy. And then they now warned uh, uh, Joseph to take the child to Egypt because Herod was looking for him to kill him. So, 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 that, so that by taking, so by taking Joseph and by taking Jesus Christ and Mary as an infant to, to Egypt, also fulfill, fulfill another, pro, another prophecy of the messiahship of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ was taken to Egypt at birth. So that, so that when they now returned after the death of Herod, now the angel again appeared to Joseph and said, My Herod has died, so you can bring, you can come back again. But instead of now coming back to Bethlehem or Jerusalem or anything, they went straight away to Nazareth. So, so they went to Nazareth. And that was where Jesus Christ grew up. So, 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 that, so that the people that knew Jesus Christ, they didn't know him as Jesus Christ that was born in Bethlehem. They knew him as Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And that was confirmed by, by, by Nathaniel when, 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 when uh, he, 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 he went to go and meet uh, he, 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 Jesus Christ. He said, I've, so, I've seen the Messiah. He said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? So they, 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 so they just thought Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth, they never knew that it's Jesus of Bethlehem or Jesus of anything. Otherwise, <clears throat> they would have known that <clears throat> this is the Messiah. So, 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 uh, uh, Nazareth was Nazareth was just a common, a common, uh, uh, insignificant city of poor people or poor fishermen. So, so they never even thought that any good thing can come out of Nazareth. So they thought Jesus Christ belonged to Nazareth. You see, so, so, so that these are, so that this is what the, the, the Apostle Peter is saying here, that that they made diligent search. They, that the the old prophets they made diligent search. And so when that that uh, Messiah was going to come, in which form it was going to come, they made diligent search. That that is what he is saying to us here. So 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 so, so that uh, <clears throat> so that the manner of their inquiry, they inquired and they searched diligently. The words are strong and emphatic, alluding to minors. You know, so so so, so that they they, 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 they they work very very hard to find out when the Messiah was going to come, uh, and, and then they were able to 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 guess. So they were able to make use of all the ordinary method of of in, in improvement in wisdom and knowledge. And Daniel Daniel also was another 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 somebody that was very very good in computation. 
you know, to find out, to find uh, revelations about everything. So the doctrine of man's salvation by Jesus Christ has been the study and admiration of the greatest and the wisest men. The nobleness of the subject and their own concern in it have engaged them with most accurate attention and seriousness to search into it. The new salvation was going to come. So they search very, very much for it. So a good man is much affected and pleased with the grace and mercy of God to others as well as to himself. So the prophets were highly delighted with the prospect of mercy to be shown both to Jews and to Gentiles at the coming of Christ. The old prophet they were so happy that when Jesus Christ come, it will be merciful both to the Jews and the Gentiles who are the Gentiles. And those the, the Gentiles are the, are the people that were despised by the Jews because the Jews regarded themselves as the chosen race of or the children of Israel, the, the chosen tribe of Israel. And any group that does not belong to them are, are despised. They are all called Gentiles. So, 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 the, 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 so, so even Jesus Christ was sent to the house of Israel, to the lost sheep of Israel. But one incident happened, or two incidences happened. The first one, if you still remember, was a gentle woman whose, whose uh, a child was sick and came to Jesus Christ to beg for mercy that Jesus Christ should, should cure uh, her, her child for, for her. And Jesus Christ said, what is the point of wasting the food that is meant for, 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 for the children of the house, of the master of the house, or upon pigs? And, and, and so that, that Jesus Christ said he was not sent to them, but he was, yeah, he was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. And what did the woman say? The woman said, but master, even the dogs can eat from the crumbs that fall on the table. So Jesus Christ said, I cannot believe this, that, that, that the faith of this woman, that even the Gentiles, the people that he was sent to, they did not appreciate him. And here is a gentle woman that he was saying that even the crumbs that fall from the from the table can, can it's okay. So Jesus can heal that your feet has healed it. And that was the first one before grace started going to the to the Gentiles. And the second instance, if you still remember again, was the the, the one we talked about the, the Jesus encounter with the Samaritan woman. Now the Samaritan women, or the, the Samaritans are also Jews before. But if you don't know the history, what happened was, after, after the death of uh, uh, King David, his son, King Solomon, became the king. And King Solomon reigned, you know, for about 40 years. But he forsook God towards the end of his life. And God forsook him too. But, but God, God said that he was not going to punish him during his lifetime, but that he was going to divide the kingdom under him through his son Jeroboam. So when King Solomon died now, his son Jeroboam became the king. And, and, and the, 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 the ten, there were 12 tribes of Israel that were, that were under Solomon. So, 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 so the, 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 about 10 tribes of Israel came to him. They said, during the time of your, your father's life, King Solomon, he was taxing us. We were paying heavy tax because he wanted to build the, the, the magnificent temple for God. So we were paying too heavy, too, too heavy taxes, taxes. Now that we have already we built the church and we build everything, everything, everybody is rich, everybody is at peace now reduce the tax for us. And what did he do? He went to go and meet the elders that we are with, with his father, with Solomon that used to advise him. He said, these are what the, the people are saying. And the elder said, well, since we don't, we, 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 we are not in, in any emergency, we are not raising any tax, we are not raising any, any fund now. Relax, relax the tax for them so that they can be your slaves, so that they can follow you. He said, yield, the elder said, yield to their request so that they can be your servant, they can follow you. He said, thank you. 
Then he went to go and meet his uh, age group, his contemporaries. Said, "This is what uh, these people, the, these tribes, are, are asking me to do." And then they advised him. They said, "But you are now the king. You have the authority. You have the power. You have everything." He said, "Go and tell them that even your your father was beating them with a horse whip. You are going to beat them with scorpion and this and that and that. And that. Show them that you are tougher than your father." Don't let them get away with it because they, your father is there, so they want to take advantage of you. No, don't allow them. Don't allow them. And he took their advice. So when they, 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 they when they came now the following day, and they asked him, what 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 is, what what were the, the 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 answer to their request? He said, "What do you think I am? I am the king." He said, "My father levy you with this. I am going to do that. My father beat you with this. I am going to beat you with that one." He said, eh. so it was it was at that time that they had a a, 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 a leader, a, a, a Joab, and that Joab ran away when his, when when Jeroboam's father was alive, because because he, he, David said because King David said Solomon will kill him, should, should, should punish him with sending him to death, so he ran away. So when when he now had that Solomon was dead, so he came back, so he was the one that now led the revolt. So, so he just told King, 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 King uh, uh, Jeroboam that, well, since, uh, since what, he said, what, what is our gain in the, in the house of David, or in the house of Jesse? He said, what is our profit in the house of Jesse? Well, why should we be paying tax? Why should we be paying levy? Why should we be paying? We are after all, we, uh, the, the house of, da the house of J David is the house of Jesse. That were the king. He said, what is our profit? He said, to Israel. Back to your tent, O Israel. So, so he divided the kingdom of the, the twelve kingdom into two. So the ten, the ten tribes went straight. The tent of Benjamin, Reuben, the, all, Levi, all of the Simeon, they they moved. They, they went away to see to. <coughs> they moved north. So, the, so they left only two tribes for 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 uh, uh, Jeroboam, which is the tribe of Judah and and uh, part of Benjamin. For for, uh, for 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 Judah. So 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 the, so that so it became a divided kingdom. The north became Israel, and the, the other one, the, the south became Judah. So so it was when they moved to the north that they started becoming. They, they started worshiping Baal. They started worshiping Nimrod. They started worshiping idol because they could not come to Jerusalem. Because the moment they move out from Jerusalem. It was not possible for them to come every year for the Passover. So for 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 uh, you have to keep them busy now. He had to make gods for them. He had to build all. He had to make so many kind of gods of the Egyptians and all these things for them. So they started becoming they they, they became idol worshiper. So 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 they were they so so they moved to Samaria and they become the Samaritans. So 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 that so that they were they, they were originally. Jews, the twelve tribes, they were part of the twelve tribes tra tra of of Israel before 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 the divided kingdom. So so now Jesus Christ now met a woman of uh, 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 um, of Samaria at at at, at uh, Jacob's well, and that was how the woman was now able to go to back to the village. Say, I've seen a man who has told me everything I've done in my life. And, and that is why Jesus Christ now told his disciples that the harvest is full, but the laborers are few. So, 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 that, so that Jesus Christ spent about three days in Samaria spreading the gospel. Because Jesus Christ, the, 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 the Samaritan woman was telling Jesus Christ that when the Messiah come, when the Messiah come, he, he will tell us, he will, he will liberate us because at, this, at the moment, he said the only the only way you can get to God is by going to Jerusalem to 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 go and, to go to go uh, 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 worship in the in the in the in the uh, uh, synagogue of uh, Solomon. But Jesus Christ said, "I am the Messiah. I am here now. That that a time is is going to come that you don't have to go to Jerusalem. You don't have to go to to, to the temple of Solomon before you can reach out to God." That that your God would do it in your in you, and that's why He's saying uh, that 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 is you must that that the God we are now serving must be served 
not physically, but in spirit and in truth. And the time has already come. So, so, this, so these are all the things that the prophets we are, we are, we are, we are thinking about. When was that prophecy going to be fulfilled? When was Jesus Christ going going to come? You see, so, 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 so that they search diligently. So, his humiliation and death and the glorious consequences of it, the suffering of Christ and the glories that shall follow. This inquiry will lead them into a few of the whole gospel, the somewhere of his days, that Christ Jesus Christ was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. So what we are saying is that Prophet Isaiah knew that Jesus Christ was going to come. He was he referred he referred to him as, as a sacrificial lamb that, that he will come. That, that he will be led to the altar, he will not open his mouth. He said, he'll be chastised. He said, the strap on his flesh will be uh, 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 something to heal us. Say, by his stripes, we are healed. He was crucified for our sake. So, 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 Isaiah, Isaiah wrote everything about everything that happened to Jesus Christ, which, which uh, we are going to learn during the, the, this coming week of, of uh, Redemption Week, during this Easter. We are going to hear everything about how Jesus Christ was tried and how Isaiah Isaiah listed out everything that, that we are going to hear next week about what happened to Jesus Christ. So the time, the manner uh, uh, of the times the Messiah was to appear. Undoubtedly, this holy uh, uh, prophet earnestly desired to see the days of the Son of Man. They too, they wanted to see. They were eager. They wanted to see when, when, when Jesus Christ was going to come. Because they already seen the vision. They already knew that it was going to come. But unfortunately, they couldn't see it. They couldn't see it. And that is why Jesus Christ told, told, told his disciples that they should rejoice. That what, what the, the old prophets long to see, you are seeing it. And what the old prophets long to hear, they did not hear, we are hearing today. So we should rejoice that that salvation, the salvation that has been brought to us is not something that we should just take for granted. That salvation that has been brought to us, a lot of people died for it. That salvation that has been brought to us, that is freely given to us, we should cherish it. He said we should cherish it because it is something that, that didn't just come out of, out of uh, by accident. It's something that that has been predicted, has been prophesied more than 1,000 years ago. More than, more than 3,000 years ago. Because Jesus Christ died about 2,000, 2,021 years now. So we are also going now at 400 or 500 years to it. So it's going to, to about 3,000 years that this salvation has already been prophesied that it's going to come, it's going to come, it's going to come. And, 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 and the, the importance of that salvation is so great. It's so great that even the prophet they desire to see it. So, 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 so that is what is now saying because it was revealed to them by the Holy Spirit. The salvation was revealed to them by the Holy Spirit. They, 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 they saw it and they were glad. So when we now read from verse thirteen, it says that verse thirteen says, it says. <clears throat> He said, a call to holy living, a call to holy living. So prepare your mind for action and exercise self-control. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. Put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your own ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scripture says, you must be holy because I am holy. So that's what that, that's what Peter is saying here, that that the salvation is definitely going to come. 
You see, he said, so, so this week's passage for focuses on the holy lifestyle that, that Christians should seek. But just what is holiness? What does it mean to be holy? Let us try and understand it. You see, he said, he said get ready. He said, therefore, prepare your mind for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Set your hope on the grace to be given to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to you. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. As a Peter began this section with the word therefore, what is he referring to that lays the, the groundwork for this present call to action? It's clear from the contents that he is referring to the great salvation discussed in verses 2, 2 to 12. He said, salvation is described variously by the phrases sanctifying work, which is um, <clears throat> the one we read in 1-2. He said, sprinkling by his blood, which is verse 1-3. Then, then great mercy, and then new birth, inheritance, salvation. So and grace. So you could see, you could see, salvation takes about, about four different def definitions. You see, salvation can, can be gra uh, sanctifying work. It can be split by His blood. It can be great mercy. It can be new birth. It can be inheritance, and it can also be salvation, as we read in in verse five, nine, and ten. And then finally, grace. Grace. So a salvation that, that prophets yearn to learn more about and angels to peer into. The, the, the old prophets, they, 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 they sought diligently to know this salvation that, that is going to be so great to come. And even the angels, the angels too, they, 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 they put their, their, their ears on the ground to, 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 to find out. To hear, to listen to people, they, 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 because they they, 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 have to learn through us. We are greater than the angels, and they have to learn. To, so the, the angels are watching us every time. The, the, what we are talking about today, the angels are with us, because the angels are also learning from us. <coughs> Therefore, because you have such an, an awesome and precious salvation, Peter urges his readers to live out their life with holiness and serious purpose. First, he calls on them to prepare your mind for action. You see, the literary expression is interesting. He say, guard up your loins of your mind. That is your loins. What, what, it, what it means is that tighten your belt, your loin. In the olden days, they don't, they don't wear belt. So, so they, have, they, they have a guard, they tighten your... They, they, around their stomach which they are loin. But in our own cases, the bed say tighten your bed, that is roll up your sleeves, tighten your bed and, and get ready for action. So that is what it says. People in the first century wore long outer garments, but when it was time to walk or to walk, they would tie the ends of their garments around their waist, that is the loins or the kidney, so as to keep them from getting in the way. Peter is saying, now give your full attention to this. So the next directive is to be self-control. So, so, so he has already told us to roll up our sleep and tighten our belt. Then the second action is asking us now is to have to is, is to be self-controlled. You see, he said, he said, beware balance, be self-control. Use figuratively to be free from every form of mental and spiritual drunkenness, from excesses from passion, from rashness, from confusion. You see, it dissipates yourself. You see, but you see, so, so, so that, like, like uh, uh, Pastor Mana was re referring to the other day, he said, there are so many buckets. He said, and then buckets of distraction. Until you are able to remain focused, until you are able to focus your mind on something, you are dissipating your energy. And that's what the even the scripture was saying that God does not want anybody that to blow cold or blow hot. He said, if, if, if you are lukewarm, it will spill you out. So, 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 that, so that it's either you are with, with God or you are not with God. But you cannot be one, one leg in and one leg out. You cannot serve God at your own convenience. Because you don't serve your boss at your own convenience. 
So how do you want to serve God at your own convenience? Because God does not take it for granted. You cry to God for help, he, he answers you. So well, once you get what you want, you take it for granted. It's either you serve him or you don't serve him at all. You see, so, so Peter, <clears throat> the second coming of Christ, as we read in, in that uh, verse 13, he said, Peter also directs his readers to set your hope on the coming of Christ. That is, to focus on the time when Jesus Christ is revealed and on the grace that we accompany it. See, to focus their time, to look forward to something when Jesus Christ is revealed to them, when, when he will come. You see, so, 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 that, so, that, so, that, so that he's now giving them that, that <coughs> he said, the, the confidence about something coming to them, coming to, which is a hope, Hope for, hope for, put one's confidence in something or, 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 or someone. Then the second coming of Christ is alluded to several times in this letter. In one, in, in chapter 1, verse 7, verse 12, verse 13, it says, Just what grace will be revealed at Christ's coming, according to Peter? What, 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 what are the benefits of this salvation? What are the grace? What, what, when, when we get that salvation, what are the benefits that will be revealed to us? One of them is that salvation will finally be revealed and consummated. That, that is, we read in, in chapter 1, verses, verses 5. He said, he said, he said in, in verses 5, he, he, he said that, um, um, and, and, and through your faith, God is protecting you by His power until you receive the salvation which is ready to be revealed on the on the last day for all to see so and through your faith because of your faith god is protecting you by his power until you receive the salvation so in other words when you receive this the salvation the salvation is more because they say god is protecting you until you receive the salvation so it means that when you receive the salvation you you, you, you get automatic protection that is what it means that when, when you receive as a vision, you get automatic protection. And it is that automatic protection that all of us are living on today. All of us are living by grace. Everybody will wake up, every time we go to bed at night, we, 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 we go into the land of the dead. Until the morning before, when, when we now raise our hands, the hands can be raised, the leg can be raised before we know that we are back alive again. So, 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 so that it is not because of our, <clears throat> our, our righteousness that God keeps us alive, but grace. And then the second one, he said, our now malignant faith will receive its full reward and receive finally its praise, glory, and honor. As we read in, in verse, verse 7, he said, he said, in that verse 7, he said, and these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold through your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So that so that so that so that if you endure to the end, you'll be you, you see, he said, who, who endures to the end will be saved. And they say Christ's glory will be manifested, as we also read in, in, in verse 12. He said that verse 12 says, And they were told that their messages were not for themselves, but for you. And now this good news has been announced. To you by those who preach in the who preach in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. So, so, so what they are saying is, is that this gospel was preached through the power of the Holy Spirit by the prophets that did not even know anything, but they did not live to see that salvation. But they knew it was going to come, they believed in it. But they were eager to see it, but it was not meant for them to see. And then God's visitation or, or inspection of our good deeds will take place. You see, God's visitation so that, so that God, our good intention, our good deeds will take place. God will reward us. So that it's not, it's not a question of we are laboring in vain. That God will reward. And God is even rewarding us before we even ask. And then he said that the fourth one said judgment and vindication of Christian's righteousness behavior. Judgment and vindication of Christ of, of Christian's righteous behavior. 
we're going to read that one in, in verse four in chapter four verse five when we get to that place and then you will receive a crown of glory when we get to verse to chapter five so at the end when when, when we now when, when jesus christ is revealed to us we will we will now receive a crown of glory and that crown of glory was what apostle paul was telling us that 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 you are not fighting a race or you are you are not you are not uh, uh, running a race to win a perishable crown but you are you are, you are, you are running a race to to win a crown of glory that that is not perishable and then he will restore he will strengthen he will confirm and steady you which is verse uh, chapter 5 verse 10. So Peter's perspective is of the present time involving struggle and suffering, but of a great anticipation of Christ's coming, glory, final judgment, and vindication of Christians, that the present time will be rough. No matter what we are going through, and and even though we, we, we are in America here, no 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 nobody is persecuting us, but but we we are still going through challenges, aren't we? Because if to say if to say we have everything right, the the Bible study class will be packed full of people. But how many people are, are online? How many people even before the pandemic? How many people were driving to the church? Not more than ten. We've never seen anybody any number more than ten coming to coming every every Wednesday. And when we now when we are now talking about bringing the, the gospel to to our comfort zone of our home how many people are online tonight so so these are what we are not talking about that some people we, we devote their time they devote their life they devote they make that sacrifice to listen to the word of god they make that sacrifice they will continue to endure to persist and but the other they say well, i cannot i cannot sacrifice that one hour i'm too busy i'm too do this i want to watch my program i want to listen to my phone call i want to do that i want to do that apart from people that have to work so so that is what we are saying here so the great hope of christ's return should not in, inspire us a, 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 in, in a sloppiness of life but a determination to live our life in holiness the Apostle John too sees the hope of Christ appearing to be a motivation to get out our life in order. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure, as we read in 1 John 3.3. 3. So what we are now saying is that because of this hope of, of this salvation that is going to come, it's asking us that it gives us more reason why we must be able to prepare ourselves, why we must be able to purify ourselves, why we must be able to live a sober life, why we must be able to to to, to put in check the, the tendency for, for, for sloppiness, for, for spiritual lethargy, for, for, for indulgence, for anything. It will be self-discipline. So that is what we are saying. You see? So, 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 now we have a question here. He said, "What about Christ? What about Christ coming should get our undivided attention? What should it inspire hope? What should it inspire self-control and soberness? What happens in our lives when we don't really expect Christ to come soon? What happens? What happens in our life when we don't really expect Christ to come soon?" So can anybody tell me why 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 the hope of Christ coming should 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 give us un, 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 undivided attention? Why should it inspire hope in us? Can anybody tell us? What about Christ coming should get our undivided attention? What about Christ coming should get our undivided attention? Christ coming is a great hope for us. Because there's no more suffering. Yeah, because there's no more suffering, no more pain. That's right. You know, there's no more suffering. 
That's trying. Beautiful. That's trying. That's trying. So, which means it is what to make that sacrifice for, isn't it? Is it easy? Is it is it easier? Is it really easy to make the sacrifices if we really determine to make it? Yeah, because um, you know I, I was reading Titus two um, thirteen. I think it was eleven to thirteen. Say while we wait for that blessed hope, That's right. the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave Himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness. And to purify for himself a people that are in his own very own, eager to do what is good. So we're waiting for that blessed hope that no more sin, no more sorrow, no more wickedness. Amen. Amen. So in, in that case, yeah. which are the best way in, in which we can make uh, everybody to see it the way you see it, the way I see it? How which 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 other way do you think we can make people to realize that? What we are uh, uh, expecting is what sacrificing for. Because if you want to buy a car, you you, you put money in, 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 you have to set money aside. You deny yourself or something. You deny yourself a lot of things because you want to save towards that thing. And it's the same thing as now this, this uh, and this is greater than a car, it's different, it's, it's greater than a home, a home is different, it's different completely. So, so it's worth making that sacrifice. How can we get people to understand that this thing is very, very important, that it's worth dying for, it's worth making sacrifice for? What, what, yeah. Who will have helped what they, they went through? 
שוב נגד איזה So do you think uh, <clears throat> do you think uh, salvation is 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 really free that we don't we don't need to because there is somebody many people believe that salvation is free which which I don't dispute but is it really free because you you, you don't the, the, the two last speakers I present they never take salvation for granted so if if you people two people that didn't take salvation for granted then is salvation free Okay. God gave us grace as a child of God, right? Okay. But that grace doesn't give us the power to sin. That grace doesn't give us the power not to do, to disobey. Salvation is free, grace is free, but it's not a life, it's not a life sin to live a sinful life. Okay. Amen? As believers. Okay. Grace is a free, it's a free gift. We don't need to pay for it as believers. It's freely available to us once we accept Christ. Can we look? Can we lose it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if that salvation is free, um, technically we will say everybody will make it to heaven if salvation is free. But will every Christian make it to heaven? And why not? If salvation is free, it means all our debts have been paid, all our sins have been wiped away by Jesus Christ's blood, and then we can live our life the way we like. But you, you, you people, you sacrifice your, your precious hour to be online tonight while others are watching football or they are drinking beer or they are enjoying themselves. And we, we, we all of us make it to heaven together? So which means which means it's, it's possible to lose salvation then? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I think I, I think as as believers, yeah, we can misuse. We can misuse. I I I prefer using the word misuse. Okay. The grace, and when we misuse, Satan knows. How important grace is to us. That's right. Satan knows how very important grace is to us. And that's why um, we should not misuse grace. Okay. Because grace gives us that power to conquer the devil. That's right. Uh, I don't know about um, Ruth, but I think if we misuse it, we're in trouble. And then we allow the doors of attack to be opened. Because Satan knows that. That's right. You know? Grace is a stronger weapon that that we Christian have. It's a very strong weapon and we shouldn't misuse it. That's true. Yeah? That's the power God has given us to help us live a holy life. That's true. So that's what Apostle Paul was saying that um, he, that uh, he, every time we commit sin and it's forget that our grace uh, abounds. He says, so shall we continue to uh, so shall we continue to sin so that grace may may, may may abound? He said, no, it should never be. So, so, which means that um, we, we, we are, like you have already said, we've been given the grace, we must not misuse it. Because if we misuse it, 
it will not save us. It will, it will not take us to heaven. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Any other question? Can Sister uh, Elizabeth, can you can you give us a close? Can you close us in cl closing prayer? May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest remain and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you.